I don't know. We were just talking about shader grass, and and then we ended up here. I don't know. Oh, Gronk is in shader grass. Well, no, it's like okay. it's like uh, we're talking about like w what it really means to master something. Uh, and I remember there's a word for it in a book somewhere. That's like and it's Gronk. I I don't know what it is. Like it it is like along those lines of Gronk. Hmm. Is this like an English word or is this a made up word? I think it's a made up English word. <laughs> I see. I don't I don't remember it though. Okay. If it's I'm, a made up word, can't it be in like any language in a way? Uh, I guess. Aren't all words made up? True. All words are fake until enough people say it. True. True. Pog. Or is it that oh. all words are real <laughs> and just someone more uh, accepted than others? Some, all words exist, some are just undiscovered. <laughs> Clacked with a word. Or an unword. <laughs> unword. <laughs> It's like ain't, you know, back in elementary school, they were like, no, not Don't a word. Use but, ain't. but now, bam. It's true. Wait, I'm pretty sure they still say don't use ain't. But now it's well, like, well, well no, they okay. ain't the boss of me, okay? Not <laughs> wrong. <laughs> hello, Garrett. Garrett? Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm here to learn Unity. Okay, alright. Oh, wait, do I have to download Unity? Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can just watch it and then, like, do it later because it will be recorded. Wait, $400? Excuse me? Nah, that's, uh, you can get a personal version. That's free. Wow. Bro, Garrett, I got SS rank in Tetris. Wow, congrats. I know, right? I'm so proud congrats. of myself. You rank when? <laughs> oh, wait. <I'm, laughs> Never, dude. I'm also SS rank. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I haven't played Tetris with, uh, Tetris in a while, though. Hmm. I, I was... I'm now mostly a Tetris effect player. Ooh, wait. Is that... What platform is that on? Uh, Xbox or PC. Oh, okay. Nice. Have you ever tried uh, Face Tris? Uh, well, I feel like I don't want to try that. <laughs> uh, oh, it's just called... <laughs> it's called Faces Tris. <laughs> you make... <laughs> Ew! What is this? Why is there why is there a hammer and sickle on it too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's communist face face dress. Face the latest. Show. Is, that's like the sketchiest Amazon page I've ever seen. <laughs> Honestly. There's Wait, what no is price, no from? button to buy. No <laughs> description. This is what the game looks like. Wait, am I supposed to get Unity Hub, or is that the wrong thing? Uh, I think you like, do. You can. You I can. think they want oh, you oh. to. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I should probably Have actually, to... like, show the instructions. <laughs> yeah, which version of Unity do we need for this? Uh... 2019.4. Will it work in... 2020 probably i mean the okay. they're they're constantly updating the shader graph stuff so it might look a little different uh but functionally i think they they try to keep it compatible all right Hopefully so it should be fun should be fun uh but yeah this middle one is the version i'm going to be using all right I'm probably going to get started around 6.10.
And we need an ERP template. Yes. Erp. Purple. Yeah, purple. let me. Like purple, but without the T. Or the E. Or just purple the T. a shortening of like oh. something <laughs> something render pipe one. <laughs> render pipe one. Wait. It wants me to make a micro game? What is this? Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. In, in what? When you're downloading Unity? A Unity Hub. Maybe just just skip the tutorial. Prompting you. Yeah, it's probably prompting oh, oh. you for a tutorial. Oh, it's it says downloading on the bottom. Never mind. Ali, I see the Oh, hey. Ali. Oh, also, uh, make sure you download this Unity package. Wow. It has the assets we're gonna be using. Oh, it's Hades Shader Graphics. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I th I thought it was like Hades Super Giant. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that yeah, actually that's, that's that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Do I need to know C sharp for the workshop? No, it's all visual visual node stuff. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, do coding shaders line by line is is uh, it's stressful. <laughs> wait, wait. Don't you need to write shaders in like Nvidia C or something? Uh, like, uh, Unity can handle H HLSR. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I've done it before, and it's not fun. <laughs> you don't like. You don't want to feel like a real greasy CS major. Doing that. It, it's just like there's so many different sections that you put stuff in, and I don't know what any of them do. So I'm just like, <laughs> I, I guess this goes here and stuff. That's fair. Wait, I like being a greasy CS student. It's easy. <laughs> okay, well. Good for you. <laughs> Jared has made peace with it. Are there are there things that you like miss out on from just using like the visual nodes? Uh, definitely. You can. I mean, like, just like how node based programming languages are like easy to understand, but probably more difficult to use for more complicated things. Uh, you can make good shaders, but like if you want really really complex ones, it you should still know, like, line by line. Yeah. Your language. Hello, David. David! By the way, what, what part of this are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you streaming the whole screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, can somebody check the stream? Check the audio? Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool, I guess. Does it matter which Unity version? Uh, just anything that's 2019.4 or above. I have many 2019. Oh, cool. You're not boards. streaming the cameras. That's good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm using this one personally. Uh, 17. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like 20 now, but, um, it doesn't really matter if, if uh, if you don't have. Yeah, like 17 and 18. And it's just like many. I think those are like practically not different at all. <laughs> Should just delete them. Maybe, yeah. They do take up a lot of space. I mean, not as much as Unreal. God. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> all right. 610. Let's get started. Okay, so just for anybody who's just coming, make sure you have Unity installed. Uh, any version above 2019.4 should be fine. Uh, once you have that downloaded, make sure that you have gone to this link and downloaded this Unity package. I don't know why, but my internet browser is being really slow today. Uh, you download this. I guess it's just my entire computer. Download that, and once you open Unity, you can drag that in, and uh, it, and it imports all the assets that you'll need for the workshop. Next up, once you have Unity installed, uh, when you click New, it's going to bring up this window. And you're going to want to make sure that this icon is downloaded. See, like. All of these aren't downloaded for me. Make sure that you 
uh, make sure that your universal render pipeline one is. Wait, what is a universal render pipeline? It's a template that Unity has. Uh, so if you start off on a 2D template, Unity will decide which packages it wants to start off the project with. Uh, for 2D, that usually includes like 2D sprite packages, uh, like s sprite slicer stuff. Uh, but for like 3D, you usually don't need stuff like that. So it has different this one in particular has packages that deals with shaders, lighting, uh, a bunch of stuff that we're going to be using. All right. Going to give it just a little, I'm going to create it, but I'll give it a little bit of time for anybody who's still uh, doing all this setup stuff. In the meantime, oh wait, sorry, go ahead. I was curious if it's possible to like change a a project that you start in just like the normal three D Unity into the universal render pipeline. Right. So it should be possible because uh, since Unity is just deciding which packages to add uh, or exclude, uh, you can go into the Unity package manager and just download the packages that you want. Oh. Yeah. Nice. They're just templates, so like you can build on them. Mm -hmm. So while we're waiting, does anybody know any jokes? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I've never heard of joke. What is, what is joke? I've never I've heard, heard of joke. Oh my god. <laughs> I like that joke. Yeah. Wow. It's just a visual gag, you know. It is peak comedy. <laughs> Not that I've ever laughed before. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Hypothetically. Mm -hmm. If I were to laugh, it would be at that. <laughs> and at you. Wow. <laughs> at me? <laughs> Not with me? That's bullying. Dang. What is bullying? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard of that one. I haven't <laughs> heard of that. It would hypothetically be that. Can you even yeah. be mad at me if I just don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> oh, true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think <Dang> so. <laughs> <laughs> you got it's like, me. It's like, whoops, sorry, I destroyed the United States government because I didn't know what I was Oops, doing. Oops, I didn't know that. <laughs> but I, did you, that you can't be mad at me. <laughs> That's pretty skilled, you know? <laughs> I, okay, honestly, yeah. But, like, imagine I cared if that happened, you know? Imagine then, caring. Imagine me. Then I would still be angry. You know how it is. Jeez, my, yeah, my computer is really chugging today. Uni's taking a while to open. Huh. Giving, laughing, and all the hilarious jokes going on. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what's wrong, though, because it's like, uh, I don't know. Nothing major changed. Maybe yeah. it's Chrome. Uh, Maybe Chrome. <laughs> this one tab of face chest is tanking. Yes. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. computer. That's all it takes. Exactly. It certainly could be the whole reason why your computer is slow. <laughs> I'd believe it. I'm speaking from experience. You could have five or six Chrome tabs open on <laughs> your computer, or just one. Uh, okay. Well, in the meantime, let's talk about uh, what shaders are and what they do. So, welcome everybody to the Hades Shader Graph Workshop. Today, we'll be talking about how to make some of the shaders that are seen in Hades. Uh, and as you can see, Hades, very pretty game. Uh, these flames made of shaders, those those candle like little lights around them made of shaders, those lava bubbles, I'm not certain, but probably made with shaders. <laughs> uh, and Hades is like, Hades is pretty unique because they use a bunch of shaders and then render them out as 
uh, 2D sprite animations uh, for some of them. I, I'm not sure if that's what they do for everything. But like uh, stuff like that lava bubble probably is that. We're not going to do exactly that, uh, but we are going to emulate the style that Hades has. So the specific asset that we're going to be creating today is this lava fall. A uh, very small asset, but we're going to be trying to match the the shading, the different like colors and the shape. Okay, so let's talk about what actually makes up 3D visuals. 3D visuals is made out of three components, a mesh, textures, and usually a shader. So everybody knows what a mesh is. It's a 3D like polygon made out of shapes, right? This is a plane, uh, and like the mesh itself usually is pretty boring, right? It doesn't have any colors, doesn't have any patterns. Uh, and that's why we use stuff like textures. Textures are 2D pictures, uh, like a PNG or something. And usually, uh, without shaders, you would use a texture to like apply a pattern or colors to a mesh. Uh, kind of like lay it over that mesh and it, that would give it the visuals. Uh, however, that usually takes a lot of work uh, if you're if you're only using textures and meshes, it usually takes a lot of work from the artist because they need to make really complicated textures, uh, and that might not even look that good because you know it's difficult to make a texture uh, and a and a mesh if you need a lot of assets. You can't like reuse a, a texture for something else, so. That's why we use something like shaders. Uh, shaders allow us to take that material and apply some effects to it, uh, decide how it looks on the mesh. So if you can see in this example, uh, this shader will take this texture and make this mesh look like this. So a very useful tool, right? Because like, this is one texture that's black and white, but I can make it distorted, uh, have color, have different designs, stuff like that. In Unity, uh, what it looks like when you're using these 3D visual components is like this. So this is like a, can you guys see my mouse? Yeah. Okay. So, you guys will see a game object. This will be like a mesh. Uh, inside of this component is what the mesh is. The mesh then has a material applied to it. And usually that material will be made from some sort of shader. Okay, so today's plan is we're gonna be recreating the water from uh, Windmaker, Zelda. Uh, and obviously we're not gonna do like really complicated stuff with it. We're just trying to emulate the, the, the style of it, it because that's, that's going to be our introduction to just how Shader Graph works. And then we're going to do something a little bit more complicated with the Hades Lava Shader. All right. And again, make sure that you have stuff installed. OK. Does anybody need some time to get Uni open and get stuff downloaded? Because if you do, just tell me. Okay, so this is, I'm just gonna be going through, uh, going through the different steps of how to make the Tune Water Shader, uh, just like step by step, and I'm gonna be explaining what each of the nodes do. Uh, there are going to be a lot of no's and a decent amount of steps, so if you ever get lost, please interrupt me, like, immediately, because, uh, all these no's kind of build on each other, and I really don't mind being interrupted if you have a question. So, uh, yeah, so please let me know. All right. 
first step is import that shader. I forget where I put it. Maybe I should have done that. And to import that, you just drag the file into your project window, import, okay, and it should make a folder called my shaders, and this will have a couple of different pictures, and it's going to have a 3D mesh, it's also going to have another folder uh, called Tune Water that we're going to be working in for now. So let's just make a separate scene. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with all this stuff and the lights. So I'm just going to make a new scene. Uh, pull a test. And now that we're in a new scene, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new shader graph. So go to Create Shader, and we're going to do an unlit graph. Okay. Now I'm going to double click on that and it's going to bring up the shader graph window. And I usually detach it just so it's easy to look at. And tell, tell me if you guys need me to zoom in or not. I, I don't know how uh, I don't know how the resolution is going to be. So first of all, let's talk about how you navigate in this window. Uh, middle click is pan, scroll is zoom in and zoom out. I'm sorry, can you go over how to get into the window again? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, double click the uh, shader graph that you made. <clears throat> okay. You good? Yep. <clears throat> okay, good. All right, so to navigate this, uh, middle click is pan, Zoom in, zoom out is scroll. Uh, you can move these nodes around by clicking on them, and you can also select an area. Uh, this window here is going to, I think it's called the blackboard, uh, and it's going to hold all your variables that you're going to be using. Uh, and this is a preview of your shader, and you can test it with different 3D models. So I can make it into a quad if I wanted. Yeah. And you can also like rotate the view. Okay. Interesting. Uh, My versions look a little different. Right, yeah. Uh, functionally, it should be about the same. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get started on the actual shader. So first thing that we want to do is we want to make a scrolling texture, right? Uh, let's say we create a node and and we make it say time. This node takes the time. This node has information relating to time. Uh, so like. Sine time would be a sine wave over time, cosine time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're going to be using time. So something that you can do in Shader Graph is you can pull out one end of a node, and if you let go, it uh, asks you if you want to make a node. So we're going to say multiply, and then it automatically connects it. Uh, actually, we should probably add some variables first. So I'm going to push the plus button over here, add a vector 1, and say size, and default 1.5. This is going to describe how big we want our texture to appear on our 3D mesh. 
add another vector one and we'll call this one flow speed. This is how fast we want it to scroll over our mesh. Okay. Uh, next, we'll, we'll drag those into our scene. You can also like search them up inside of this. Oh yeah, if you push space, it'll bring up this menu. It'll ask you to create a mesh. So once we have these two variables into our scene, we're going to connect them into a divide node. Uh, and which, which order you put them in does matter. So we'll put flow speed in the top and size in the bottom. And we're doing this so that your flow speed uh, is in your flow speed scales with your size uh, because you know if you have a larger size and your flow speed is the same, uh, it looks like your texture is flowing slower, and we don't want that. We want it to seem consistent even if you're using a different size. Okay, and then we're plugging that output into this multiply node. So uh, these divide and multiply nodes, they're pretty self-explanatory. They divide the two values by each other. Uh, let's get into something a little bit uh, more complicated. We're going to make those connect to a UV. Oh, wait, no, sorry. We're going to make a UV node. Uh, and we're going to make an add node. So essentially what we're doing by adding uh, this number to a UV, like, like a default UV, we're basically converting that number value to a UV. Uh, and UV kind of just means like, it's kind of referring to uh, the placement of the texture on the mesh, if that makes sense. It, it, a UV is kind of like, you know, if I wanted something to be scrolling over the mesh, I would move, I would change the values of the UV. Okay, so now that we have this UV of just time, so now, so now uh, the value of this is a UV that's scrolling. Uh, scrolling along with time, uh, we want to actually add the texture part of it. So let's add a multiply node, get size, like that. Uh, and we will plug that into a sample texture and put that into UV. Okay. So now we've given a sample uh, information on what we want our texture uh, to be positioned. So now let's get a texture in there. We will add a new texture 2D to our blackboard. Let's call this uh, foam texture. And let's select this as So to choose that texture, you know, click in the circle, look up V. I don't really know how to say that, but we're going to be using one of these two. It doesn't really matter which one you want. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. What do I click on? Uh, so we're going to be adding a new variable for a texture. So once you've 
quickly clicked this plus button, uh, clicked on texture 2D, you should see that it adds a new variable. Uh, and what it says in default, the default of the default should just be none. But if you click the circle here, it'll bring up this menu, and then you're going to look for this texture. And you can look it up by name or something. If it's not... Reason on my version, it doesn't show the drop-down stuff. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, if that happens to you, you can just minimize... Well, you can make this window smaller. Go into wherever you have that texture, and then just drag it into that window. Drag it into that little section. All right, did that work for both of you? I, could, I couldn't drag it in. Wait, really? Yeah. Did you make sure that you added the right type of variable? Because you want a texture 2D variable, like this one. Yeah, it says texture 2D on the side. That is weird. Oh, wait, how did, uh, sorry, I'm just now catching up because my Unity's finished installing. Um, how did you get the texture 2D node on the graph? Texture 2D node. The sample texture 2D? Oh, I just made it. Uh, space bar, and then sample texture. And can you can you move over the the thing? I don't know why it's not letting you add a new texture. Uh, does it say does is the check mark for exposed done? Is it is it checked? It, there's there's no check mark or anything. It's just the little like oval. Oh, did you expand it? There's there's no arrow to expand it. What the heck? Yeah, so I'm kind of confused. That is super weird. Um, wait, okay. Uh, can you? Hmm. I'm trying to do that. Okay, well, does it still let you drag it into the scene? Like, does yeah, it let you do that? It does. Okay, uh, just keep on following along, and if you follow the steps, you should, you might be able to add it in the Unity editor. So, let's okay. just hope that it works. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. So, for everybody else, uh, Take that texture that you just added to the blackboard, put it in here, and drag it into the texture area of your sample 2D, sample texture 2D node. What you'll see is that now your, uh, y your texture is like slowly scrolling. And that's because, you know, we made this section uh, and we made it into a UV that's slowly moving. Something that you can also do with this is you can uh, you can select all of them, right click them, and uh, you can group them. So it's like you know, time scroll, something like that. And that's just for organization stuff. Not too important. So now let's try dragging our sample 2D texture, uh, the RGBA, into the color slot of our master node. This master node is what actually determines the appearance of our mesh. So now that we've put something into it, our actual mesh will look different. Cool, right? 
got that little bit of scrolling now. All right, so this is obviously not what we want, right? It doesn't have any color, uh, doesn't really have that classic water waviness. Uh, let's get to actually improving on some of those points. So the next thing I want to do is make this actually distort. Uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to add another texture 2D. And we'll call this a flow map. And then we're going to put in the flow map. We'll drag that into the scene. And we are going to make a normal from texture node. And drag that in. Yeah, I'll slow down a little bit here just in case anybody needs to catch up. And I'm also going to explain what a normal map really is. Uh, a normal map is made up of a bunch of values that are supposed to encode uh, the normals for a texture. If you're not used to 3D modeling, that probably doesn't mean that much to you. Just know that uh, it's kind of just meant to store values that you can then use for effects, like what we're going to do. OK. Uh, we're going to make a multiply node. And we're going to make another variable, vector1, called flow string. And we're going to give this a default value of uh, 0 0.007. Drag that into the scene and multiply these two together. OK. So once we've done that, uh, we want to we want to actually apply that to our other texture. So let's make a add node. Uh, let's drag these two into this. Wait. I did this wrong. Uh, oh, oh. I dragged the wrong thing in. We take it from this multiply node. Take it from this add node. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody need clarification on that? Which node I'm taking it from? I, I can't even find a vector one to add. Wait, really? Also, wait, what's the difference between a vector one and just like a float? Nothing. Vector one just means float. OK, cool. Uh, hmm. What do you mean you can't find vector one? Like on the little plus button, there's just no vector one. There's no vector one. Yep. You know what? I, I, might just, I might just like follow this later on with like the current. Yeah. What version are you using? Uh, 2020.2.2. Huh? huh? It's already a lot weirder, too, because I don't have the master node at the end. I have like two separate little like vertex and fragment nodes or whatever. You made an unlit node, right? When you did yeah, create, so. create shader, and then you, make, you made an un, un Oh, wait, yeah. The, the, the 2020 shader graph is a little bit different. In with like how they lay that, lay things out. Dang it. <laughs> well, my bad. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I'll figure, I'll figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. OK. So once you've taken from this and node, plug it back into the multiply.
All right, so once you've done that, you'll see that our water texture now has some really cool distortion effects. Uh, and pretty much the way that's working is it's, uh, it's taking this texture and scrolling it so that we can, uh, it's scrolling it and then like adding how much it should scroll for the water. Uh, and since this isn't like a uniform picture, it makes this picture, this texture, unevenly scroll. It's kind of hard to, you know, kind of hard to uh, imagine, but just know that you know, like it, it makes it uneven. So now that we've made a distortion thing, uh, let's actually make this water look like water. So the first thing I want to do is add another layer of foam. So something I'm going to do is make an add the node. And drag that into a sample texture 2D and put that into the UV node. We're gonna take the same foam texture and put it into this one. So you'll notice that this is pretty much the same thing as this except that we add an add node. Uh, with like a very small value. I used 0.1. Uh, and this is so that this texture, this one, is going to be slightly offset from this one. Uh, so when we're adding multiple layers of foam, it's going to be like slightly different. So that, you know, if we don't have that, it would just be the same exact texture layered on top of each other. Okay. And now let's make a lerp node. Uh, so lerp is kind of difficult to explain, it, uh, and I'm not completely sure how it works, uh, but we're just going to say that we're just going to use it to color our textures, and we're not going to worry how it does it. I'm going to add some colors. First color I'm going to make is a watercolor. And then I'm going to make a dark foam color. You can play around with these colors. Uh, it's not that important. I'm just going to make them vaguely vaguely watercolored, like that. And then I'm going to drag them into scene, put the watercolor at the very top of the lerp, and put the dark foam at the second one. And you get, should, should get something like that. Does anybody need me to explain that step? Okay. Next thing we're going to do is make a, another lerp node. Uh, and we're going to drag this into the top. And we're going to add another color. This time it'll be a light foam. Color. 
make it white. That's not white. Let me drag it into here. Now we're going to take our bottom sample texture and put it into here, the one that we had before. And now you can see the this texture is kind of offset from this one, and we're kind of adding them together so that we have the light part, the dark part, and then the base color. And now I'm going to drag all of that back into the color node of the Unlit Master. And nice, we have a pretty solid looking water texture. At least with the colors, the distortion, the multiple layering. Does anybody have questions on how to get here? Or does anybody need to like see any nodes? If not, the asset. right. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's not actually gonna save the graph until you click this this button over here. So make sure that you do that often. Uh, let's label like all of this coloring. And we're going to add one more thing for this shader. Uh, right now it's all flat. We want it to be displaced. We want its vertexes to be displaced. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a position node. And we're going to make this a world. Yep. OK. And we're going to make a split node. So. This world node is going to have the, the values for each world position of each vertex of the, of the mesh that we're using. Split will break it into four components. Uh, and then we're going to use add. We're going to put the R and B values into add. Gonna make a time value, time node, and plug those two nodes into another add node. Okay, so the reason why we're doing all of this is so that we get waves. Uh, based on the, I think it's like X and Z coordinates, uh, you'll get. Uh, you'll get like larger waves or smaller waves. And then with this time node, we're going to make it so that it happens, it, it kind of scrolls those waves over our mesh over time. Okay, uh, let's plug that into a sine node. And that's just math. And make it a multiply node. And make a new vector one called uh, wave speed. And we're defaulting this to one. Drag that in, put it into the multiply node. All right. Very last thing we're going to do is. Uh, Oh, I guess we're still doing a couple things. Make a vector three. Uh, put that into the Y component. Make another position node. Add. Uh, put those two together. Finally, we're going to plug this into the vertex position of our master node. <laughs> yeah. The 
Does anybody need help to get to this point? I'm sorry, where do we where do we put connect it to? We put it to the vertex position field in the unlit master. All right. Um, yeah. So the sine wave is obviously just making it, you know, between one and zero. Uh, kind of like in a smooth uh, motion. The reason why we put it into a vector three is because we're going to actually put it into vector position. Uh, a vector position is described by a vector three. So we want it to, uh, and since our waves only are gonna be made by changing the y position, we plug it only into the y component of a vector three. And I'm not actually completely sure why we plug in the world position again. Uh, it might just be, you know, like additional vertex information. I'm not sure. All right, finally, let's see how this actually looks. Uh, so something you can do is right click on your shader graph, go to create and click on material. And that's going to automatically apply the shader to that material. Uh, and now let's make a plane to add it to. Wait, am I supposed to right click on the scene to create the material? Uh, well, you can, you can right click on the shader graph and then click material. Or you can just like right click inside the project window, create material, and then you can go into here uh, go into shader graphs, then choose which shader graph you want to apply to this material. Either way works. All right. How do I put the material in the scene? Uh, so what I did was I created a 3D model, a 3D object, uh, made a plane, then you can drag your material from the project window onto that object. What the heck? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know why that's happening. That is weird. But I'm not going to worry about that. Um, oh. I might have messed up the shader a little bit but it's fine we're gonna scale up this to like maybe 10 in the x and y directions and also the y and now you can see that this material has the choppiness uh, has all the colors and has that scrolling texture. One final thing before we move on to something else is if you click on the material that you made with the shader on it, uh, it's going to have a bunch of values. Uh, and you can actually change these. So like if I want this, uh, if I want this ocean texture to be repeated a lot more, I'll make the size larger. Something like that, right? If I wanted to use a different texture for this, I would drag in a new, a new picture, and it would change it in real time. If I wanted a different flow map, I could import a new one. If I want different colors, I could just change it. Looks bad. <laughs> Can make it well 
we can make it <laughs> distort a little bit more, but the way that we do it's kind of weird if you turn it too high. Uh, wave speed. I can make these waves a lot more strong. Uh, and just a bunch of different customizable stuff. That's why this blackboard area is really useful because you can uh, you can create multiple materials with this shader and then apply them for for different things. So we're gonna take a little break, maybe like 10, 15 minutes to talk about what we just did. And then I want to actually make another shader, the lava from Hades. Do any of you guys have questions that I can answer in this break? Okay, I gotta go, but uh, thanks for the workshop. Um, that was really cool. No problem, man. And I hope that you'll look at it, uh, look at the shader, the lava shader part later, because that's uh, a really cool application of it. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, just for clarification, that uh, that Windmaker Water sh uh, shader is not made by me. I followed this tutorial, uh, and the reason why I went through it was just so that you guys can uh, really understand each step of it and uh, potentially understand the next one that we're doing a little bit more. already talked about that. Next thing that we're doing is Hades Lava. I do want to take a little bit of a break though, <laughs> because we did just go talk about a lot. Yeah. So how's your day? How's your guys's day been? Um, it's y'all. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Do you speak Texan? <laughs> speak Texan. You live in Texas. Do you speak Texan? I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> no, every time I say y'all, I like I like really hear it. I like I say it like naturally, but then like after like at it, I only notice that I say it after it comes out of my mouth. Like, oops. Oh, oops. The yee yee is coming out of me. Hey, Alex, so if we make any changes to the shader graph, we're going to have to like recreate the material, right? No. no? Uh, be because the shader is... The material is like constantly taking from the shader. So, oh, okay. for example, if I just like disconnect this for a second... Disconnect that and then save the asset. Always remember to save the asset. Then yeah, you can see that that material is now di different. Okay. It updates real time. Do you know what mode and precision mean? For the for the for the the, 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 the variables. Oh. Um I, oh wait, never mind. I understand node or uh, mode. Yeah, um, so I don't understand precision. For color, the mode is just like some lighting stuff. For precision, um, I'm not entirely sure what half means. Actually, no, I don't. I don't know what precision means. <laughs> I've I've never messed around. Oh, is it just like it only moves in like. Like a flow, it would just like go by like to the tenth maybe, and then half it goes by point five. Um. What if? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna click on it and then see what it does. Yeah, let's try it out. So I'm gonna make water speed wave speed half. And I don't I'm know what this did for me. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that did. Not a... Nope. A. I mean, what yeah, it sounds know. like is uh, how it stores the values. Uh, uh oh. Because, like, floats, like decimal numbers, can sometimes have small rounding errors. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe you don't want that. So yeah. 
one of those other precision modes might fix that in some way. But honestly, I don't know. Sounds like I won't be looking at it until it messes me up. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I want to see how this looks on a on a cube. Why so far away? Press F to zoom. Okay. Or do that. But I want it near the water. I want oh. this to be a water side cube. Oh, the water is really far away. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Where did they land? I don't know. I think your perspective uh, camera is a little odd. I don't think what they the get supposed to be. <laughs> Wait, no, it's just off center. <laughs> um, is there a way for me to show y'all? I guess Alex would have to share screen. But... Oh. Wait, maybe I did the shader wrong. <laughs> uh, let me s oh you know what it is it's probably that last thing I must have got it wrong in my notes let's see if it's this I'm gonna delete the position node and the add node and just put this in save the asset check again I mean, also, it, I probably shouldn't be putting it on a cube. <laughs> but, uh. Huh. I don't know what's going on. do need that wall position stuff. I actually have no idea. All right, we're going to get started again at 7.10. So if you need to do anything, Oh, the world position thing is required. Okay. Sorry, off center. Another thing that you can do is if you click on the settings for the Umlet Master, you can make your you can make your shader two-sided. By default, they're not two-sided. Okay. I think my I think my clipping on my camera is really weird.
So how did you guys feel about uh, doing that shader? Was it hard? Was it easy? Uh, uh, I had to step up for a, fa a family Zoom call, so I <laughs> missed all of it. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Okay, well, you can watch it later. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I need think to it's, like, <laughs> simple to follow, but it's just, like, understanding what's happening is hard. Mm -hmm. At least that's been my experience with shader slash shader graph this entire time right and like it's not like i completely understand every single thing but that's like, happening i'm just like you know it's, if you can find a learning experience if you can find resources online that are uh that sort of explain it you'll be able to use those tricks later yeah Sh tricks and tips And kick clips. <laughs> oh, whoops. Messy pink as well. Spiky water. Like sparkling water. <laughs> Except it makes your mouth bleed. That's why I drink water. To, to make your mouth bleed? You gotta make sure you stop blood in you, right? <laughs> How else are you supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> Speedy water. This water's got somewhere to be. All right, it's 7.09. I'm probably just gonna get started because I'm bored. Anybody cares if I start one minute early? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. I'm sorry to let you down, Ali. All right, we're gonna create a new shader graph unlit also. Uh, and let's call this Hades Lava. That, bring that up. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this main preview. Uh, we have a custom mesh called default. Sorry if that's confusing. It probably is. All right. And it should look kind of like a waterfall shape. Make sure that you have that in. And I'm just going to make it two-sided because. All right. Now that we have that, let's, oh wait, actually. Well, I'm not getting the default mesh. Like when I open the like custom mesh thing, it shows like the purple part of the lava flow and not the normal mesh part. The purple part of the lava flow. I'm not like because lava flow has like default or the default object, no oh. material, and it has some. Else. Do you just like mean down here? Yeah. So. Oh I, yeah. I see that you can, thing, but not the. Uh, yeah, you just double click on that. It, it should be fine. 
Yeah, because if you click on default, it should it should just show that. If it's pink, that just means that it doesn't have any uh, texture on it. But is it showing? Oh, it's still not. It's still not showing. Yeah. Oh. I don't really? Oh, it's only showing like one side of it for me. Okay. Uh, oh yes, 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 I see. Yeah. So make sure. Oh. Was, oh yeah, yeah. That's I right. I guess it I was like. Yeah. Make sure I was looking at the back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. So make sure that you make it two-sided, so it's easier to see. And we're remember... two-sided. Yeah. It's an unlit master, the cog. For flower. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cog. It's too. Well, yeah, I mean, it looks more like a flower than a cog <laughs> after I said the cog first. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, I guess it's their fault, then. A cog can be around if it wants. Okay. <laughs> or maybe a, it could just be a flower. Why can't it just be a flower? <laughs> that's what it looks like. Okay, so, oh. the, so the structure that I'm going to do with this shader is I want to actually look at how they do it in-game. This is this is like their proce uh, super giant's process for making the shader. Uh, and I'm going to try to follow it sort of step by step for when we're making it. Okay, the video player has a flower too. Whoa! That's a spiky <laughs> flower. <laughs> So this is what we want to make. So the first thing they start out with is a scrolling fractal noise thing, right? Uh, so let's do that. First thing that we're going to do is make a texture 2D for our fractal noise. And let's find that. And we're also going to make another uh, variable called scroll speed. Oh, whoops. I mean, that's the wrong type. Uh, scroll speed. Vector 1. Shit, sorry. Vector 2. <laughs> And our default values are going to be 0 0.03. All right. So let's make a time node. Uh, drag scroll speed in. Multiply. And we're going to multiply time by scroll. Next, we're going to plug that into a tiling and offset node. Put that into the offset. Uh, we're going to use 0 0.4, 0 0.4 for these tiling values. And finally, we're going to make a sample 2D. Uh, put in our fractal noise. And plug in the tiling and offset into these UV. So yeah, we got that first step down, uh, the scrolling fractal noise. All right, let's see what's next. Next, we're going to have a scrolling cell pattern. Okay. So we can actually reuse this value for the scroll because we want it to scroll at the same uh, speed. So what we're going to do is get another texture called the uh, cell vector. And we're going to look for our cells. Uh, 
uh, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Make a tiling and offset node. Drag in the value from this multiply node into the offset. Uh, we're going to use slightly different values, 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. And we're going to make another sample vector, dragging in the cells. And connect all of that, put in the UV, and now we have that. Cool, cool, cool. Uh -huh. So we're going to do a couple more things with these holes. Uh, let's add a, another variable, a vector 1, and call it hole strength. And this is going to describe how prominent we want this texture to be. Uh, which would mean like, how much do we want it to show up in the final texture? So let's get a multiply, uh, put that into here. Oh yeah, and the default should just be one. Next off, we're gonna get another going to get another texture in here, uh, and this one will be called top gradient. Oh, I kind of forgot. Okay. Uh, the next step we're going to be doing is adding this top gradient. Uh, so what they say here, it's additive white gradient to control hole area. Uh, what that means is that they only want the holes appearing on the bottom half of the texture. Uh, so what they're doing is they're making it white on the top. And what this kind of, kind of means is that if you multiply this mask by anything else, it'll keep... Uh, It'll keep whatever textures at the top, but these holes at the bottom will show through through anything, if that makes sense. Because like, if I add this with a different texture, uh, man, this is hard to explain. If I add it with another texture, these holes at the bottom are are is what's going to show up, I guess. Okay, so we're going to do an add. We're going to make this uh, this top gradient have this gradient texture here, and we're going to add these to go. Uh, I need to sample it. Sample texture here. Go back here. And add it with this one. Alright. So now we should have something that looks like this. Okay. Let's see what the next step is. Mesh warp cell pattern for speed and shape variant variation. Uh, I don't really know any way to do that in Unity uh, shader graph, so we're going to st skip that step. Pretty much all it does is makes it make it uh, flow at a different rate at certain areas in the mesh, uh, in the texture. So it's just a little bit for style. Next, we're going to multiply the cell pattern with the original fractal noise layer. And what that means is just we're going to take what we made before and take what we just made and we're going to multiply them together. Alright, 
So this is actually something interesting. You'll see that we multiplied these two textures together. Uh, and the result, it's not really clear what happened, right? Uh, pretty much what we're doing here is we're treating each pixel on this texture as a value between 1 and 0. Uh, and since we're multiplying them together, if it's 1 on here, that means that it's going to be completely normal and just equal whatever is on the other texture, right? And if it's 0 on this one, that means it doesn't matter what's here, it's going to appear as black. Uh, and black is 0, white is 1. And that's why we added this gradient. It's so that we want this, the top part of this uh, texture and we only want some parts of the bottom texture with the holes. And that's sort of what's happening in between here. You can kind of take this same, uh, you can kind of take this same idea and apply some more gradients to it. So it's like, let's add another texture too. Uh, and let's call this a side gradient. And let's get side gradient in here. Put that here and add it. See, now add is kind of different, right? Because uh, it's it's bounded by 1 and 0. If you add it and it's white, then just it's going to be white in the, in, the, uh, in the product. OK. Can you all actually see? the next step would have been to add that gradient at the side. And that's just another style thing. So this next step, you'll see that it wants us to add an outer shape with a black feathered vector mask. That's a lot of complicated words. Uh, pretty much all that means is that we want this, this texture uh, to not be a square, right? Because lava isn't really, you know, ever a square. So we're going to give it a slightly more natural shape. Uh, how we're going to do that is add another texture. Uh, we'll call this a shape mask. And I think it's, yeah, shape mask here. Drag it in. Sample that texture. And we're going to use a subtract node this time. Uh, put this at the top. Put this at, oh, wait. Did I do that in the wrong order? Put this one on top. Put this one at the bottom. No, it's the other way. Uh, so what this does is it's sort of subtracting all the white areas in this one from this one. So you can kind of see it's a slightly more feathered shape than before. All right, so I think this is pretty much going to be our base texture. Uh, we're not going to be adding any more textures from here on out. OK, so we made that feathered mask. Crossfade for seamless loop. Uh, I don't know any way to do that in Unity. Pretty much all that means is that it's going gonna, it's gonna to make 
their textures scroll seamlessly. Uh, so there's not like any repeating edges that we sort of have like here. Mesh wrap, so that's putting the texture on a on a three D kind of uh, mesh. Posturize RBG values for stylization. Let me explain what posturization means. Uh, it means that they're gonna take uh, they're gonna take a bunch of values and make it so that all of them conform to a certain number of values. So right here you can see that they make all these different values uh, map to either black, this dark gray, this like lighter gray, this gray, or white. Uh, it's kind of like getting rid of all the values in between and making it go to a certain one. So we're going to do that. Should we add some labels to the word? Uh, to all of this, probably, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> it's fine. If you want to, if you want to go through this again, you probably do want to add labels, but I think we should move a little faster. I don't want this workshop to go over. Ooh, oh, dang it. I messed up the shader a little. Uh, okay. So instead of multiplying it here, we'll actually multiply it later. So move this to here, and then multiply this with this. And then we're going to put that into the posterize. posterize. Yeah, that's a little confusing. So it should be mostly black? Yeah. Uh, right now, yeah. I'm just gonna leave it at this screen in, in case anybody needs to uh, fix theirs. Yeah, so pretty much you're adding all the masks before you multiply it. Okay. All right, let's go into this posterize uh, node. So we're going to use three steps, no, six steps. I missed, I missed a node. Okay, so before we actually put it into a posterized node, we're gonna put it into a smooth, into a smooth step node. Okay, what does smooth step do? Uh, it takes a bunch of values and maps them into a new range. So say that I have a texture that only has values from zero to 0 0.3. Uh, well, I can make them then map to a range of like zero to one. It's kind of like, yeah, 
it's kind of just a remapping. So the values for this we're going to use is 0.3 on all of these values. Okay. Once we have that, now we'll put it into the posterize. And we'll actually use uh, four steps. Okay, so now your posterize should look something like this. And let's go back to here, see what they do. So they posturize, uh, they posturize their color values and their alpha separately. Uh, we're also going to do this. So let's make another posturize. That's not it. Let's make another posturize mode. Drag this into here. And this time we want six steps. Okay, and six steps means that it's going to take in slightly more, uh, slightly more of the values than before. Okay. And now, we're going to make this posterize go into the color. We're going to make the other posterize go into the alpha. And we're going to turn the alpha clip threshold up just a tiny, tiny bit. Oh. And we're also going to make this, uh, this unlit master transparent. The alpha clip threshold doesn't actually matter. Never mind. But um, yeah, you're putting the posturize node into color. You're putting the posturize the other posturize node with six steps into alpha, and then you're making your unlit master a transparent surface. Now your main main preview is gonna look something like this. So it's kind of like the lava, except now it's uncolored. Right. Let's add color. We're gonna add another variable. We'll call it a. We'll make it a gradient, and we're gonna call it a lava color. Uh, here you can mess around with the values. I have a preset, uh, but pretty much we're just gonna take that gradient, sample the gradient, sample gradient in here, put our posterize value here, and put it into color. Okay. Another active. Go to this final transparent. This isn't exactly what we want. But um, yeah, we're sampling, we're sampling this lava color. Uh, so let's explain how that gradient works. It's kind of confusing because it says time here. But um, if you give this node a gradient, uh, it'll be able to tell um, how far in this gradient you need to be to sample a color. Uh, so kind of what it's doing is like if it's black, it'll be at zero, right? And zero is like at the very left of it. If it's one, it'll be at the very right. And any values in between is it kind of decides where it is. And that's how it's coloring it like this. Uh, I think I did this a little bit wrong. I don't think it should be transparent. Okay, so it shouldn't be transparent, but this value should be higher. Wait. How do 
How do I do this? I'm forgetting. Seriously, not be two sided. I thought I could. Did you make the blend additive? Oh, wait, no, that worked. That was weird. Oh. So I turned off two sided and then turned it back on, and then it started working. Okay. So basically, if you want it to, to like, leave out some of the black values, uh, you turn off two-sided and then turn it back on, and then set an alpha clip threshold to a pretty small number, or to whatever you think looks good. That's really weird. I don't know why it does that. Okay, but yeah, that wraps up this lava shader. Uh, you can see that it has that very nice division of colors, uh, very clear. It has these holes that appear at the bottom, kind of like sp splitting it up. Uh, and that's from our cells over here. Uh, you can see up here, it's very kind of like streamy. Uh, and that's from our fractal noise. Uh, and you can see that on these sides, there are pretty prominent streams that don't really go away. That is from this side and side gradient. Uh, and you can see that these tips are like kind of rounded and the ending is like not completely square. That's from our shape mask. Yeah. So when you're actually making a shader, it usually helps to kind of see each step uh, along the way because you'll you usually won't be making it all in one go. You'll be like testing it at one point and then like adding on a little small thing and seeing how it changes uh, your eventual shader. Uh, we did it all at once, which might have been a little bit confusing. Uh, but hopefully you understand the nodes that we use and the methods uh, that you want to remember a little bit better now. So that's actually you see how it looks in scene. Lava flow. Make a material out of that shader graph. And put it on here. That shader in scene. And you can see if you uh, change the scale, that shader scales real quick. We also got some different values that you can change. You can make it scroll faster if you wanted. Very fast to lava. You can make these holes more prominent or less prominent. Um, I think that is all. And also, I don't, I don't know any way to make a gradient uh, editable in editor. So if you want to change the color, you probably just have to do it here, which is kind of a shame because that's annoying. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty customizable with the colors at least. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too hard to follow. I know that I kind of flubbed it in the middle. Uh, but yeah, if you did have trouble, hopefully you can just go back through the recording and rewind kind of like that and hopefully you'll be able to make yourself this cool little shader that 
you can use. All right, I think we're going to call it here. Thank you, everybody, for coming. That's nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. All right. And we're going to stop playing.